Ideal gas law. PV equals nRT can be looked at a couple different ways. Let's keep the number of moles of gas in the system constant. And we know R is always a constant. So what if we change uh, V and T? Well, V1 is the T1 as V2 is the T2. In other words, if we increase volume, we're also going to have to increase temperature. Because remember, this is like a scale of the equal signs of the middle. And what you do to one side, do to the other. So all this is doing is uh, setting this up as a ratio so that uh, the first volume is to the first temperature as the second volume is to the second temperature. They're directly proportional to each other. And you could go on and say that V3 equals T3. Another way to say this is that volume divided by temperature is going to equal K, or constant. The ratio uh, that the two make up is always going to be the same. right? Still another way to say it is if you just cross multiply these two guys and you get V1 T2 is equal to V2 T1. And let, let, let's see why that is. Why is it that whenever you have an increased volume, um, you have increased temperature and vice versa? Well, it's just like with a hot air balloon, right? <clears throat> you haven't turned on the burners yet, and you know that this is V1, and this is T1. So it's still kind of cool, um, temperature of outside air, uh, maybe on a nice day, it's going to be, um, uh, let's say, 25 degrees C, which is room temperature. And of course, we have to use Kelvin, so that will be something like 273 plus 25, it's going to be about, what, 298? Yeah. And let's say the volume of this hot air balloon is, I don't know, 100 liters. Now, you heat it up. You turn that sucker on. And what happens when you increase temperature? Well, of course, you get an increase in volume. So you have T2. And you have V2. And what, what if they told you that the new temperature was, let's say, 200 C. And you know you have to turn that into Kelvin. So that's 473 K. Well, you, you, you know that... Um, Volume's going to have to increase too, right? I mean, um, since you have increased temperature, you know you're going to increase volume, but how much? Well, just plug it in. So you have um, V1, which is 100 liters. Over T1, which is 298 Kelvin. is equal to V2, which is, that's what we're trying to figure out, we'll call that X, over 473 Kelvin. <coughs> and of course, you just cross multiply, if you haven't figured that out already, 298X is going to be 47,300 divided by 298. And you have 47,300 divided by 298, and you get 158.72. And for the sake of significant figures, we'll just say 159. And since the volume rate is going to be in liters, right? That's what we're trying to determine to begin with. 
So V2 is 159 liters. Uh, we knew automatically with this problem that if you have an increase in temperature, of course you're going to have an increase in volume. And all we did was determine what this is, and this is actually called Charles's Law. Okay, so let's break down PV equals NRT. Uh, another way, let's say you kept, in addition to the number of moles of gas, you kept temperature constant. Of course, R is always a constant. Remembering that an equation is like a scale, that the left side always has to equal the right side. If you kept the right side the same, and let's say you decreased volume, what would you have to do to pressure? Well, you would have to increase pressure, otherwise the scale would tip, right? Let's see why. If you have a bunch of people on a train, and then let's say the train broke down, and they had to move to a smaller car. Well, what would happen to the pressure on those people? It would go up, right? Probably in the form of their blood pressure because they'd be more angry now. But the point is that as uh, the volume goes down, pressure's going to have to go up and vice versa. Another way to write that would be P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2 or P times V is going to equal some constant. Right? So in other words, if you change uh, pressure in some way, then you're going to have to change volume in the opposite way to keep uh, K the same or that constant. So what if you uh, combined, oh this is uh, Bohr's Law. So P1, uh, V1 equals uh, P2, V2. W what if you combine both uh, Charles's and Bohr's law. Well, you have something like this. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. And that's breaking down the ideal gas law.